So today's noir vember film was, I think, I guess my first uh, of the era noir of the season. This is Jacques Tourneur's Berlin Express. Um, it's available from Warner Archive Collection DVD. You can also stream it right now on Filmstruck as part of the Jacques Tourneur um, Director of the Week. It's from a story by Kurt Siotomak, who was um, uh, the other Siotomak. I'm just already forgetting his name. Oh, God. Um, Robert Siotomak's brother. And um, has a screenplay by Harold Medford. Shot by Lucien Ballard, who at the time was married to Merle Oberon. Merle Oberon being the star of this film. And it's set um, after the war, in mostly in occupied Germany, hence the title Berlin Express. It is, uh, the Berlin Express was a train that people with the right paperwork were allowed to take um, uh, dignitaries, uh, government officials, things like that, of all kinds of nationalities, because Berlin, as you know, was split into quarters. Um, there was, I think, the British quarter, the U.S. quarter, the Soviet quarter, and then the German, West German quarter? I'm not sure. German quarter. Um, so you get people of all of those aspects here. But the film starts in England where um, there is a pigeon that has died and these kids are trying to play with it and then their mother takes it because they're going to eat it. But they've discovered that it has a um, message hidden on it in, in German, in a code. What does this mean? You later find out what this means. You also meet uh, several people on the train, a French woman named Lucienne, played by Merle Oberon. Um, an American agriculture expert who's going to come and help uh, fix the famine, Robert Ryan. Dr. Bernhardt, a renowned German, German activist, played by Paul Lucas. Um, a Frenchman named Henry Perrault, played by Charles Corvin. A British teacher, played by Robert Coote. A Soviet lieutenant, played by Roman Toborov. And a German businessman, played by Fritz Kartner. Um, and all of these people are going to play an important role in the film. I don't really want to talk about the plot because there's a bunch of twists and turns and um, I don't want to spoil them. So let's just say someone, something's going to happen and all of these people are going to be involved. This film was shot on location in Germany. So it almost also works as a documentary in that it documented occupied Berlin similar to the way that the third man um, documented occupied Vienna. Uh, you've got a train station and several other um, very uh, stark landmarks that show both what what survived through the war and the changes that happened due to the war. Um, it's beautifully shot by uh, the cinematographer Lucien Ballard. Um, not just beautiful close-ups of Merle Oberon, like the whole thing is gorgeous. It very much fits into post-war Nazi um, paranoia films. There's a lot of these some of which take place in um, Europe, some of which take place in America, Nazi spies. There's like so many of them in the 50s. You have no idea, which ran into the Red Scare um, Soviet films as well. There's a whole slew of noirs that are either Nazi-related or Soviet Red Scare-related in this era. Um, but this film, unlike a lot of them that are very kind of dark and, and um, cynical about the world and about Nazis and about all of it, this one, and this is why it's like on the fringe of noir, it's not quite noir, but it is. This one has a, a hopeful ending where it tries to say that you don't just need war to get people to work together. You, you, you can all work together at any time because we're all human. And this film has a very humanist message at the end about um, working together for the greater good and, and the goodness of people and trying to focus on that goodness and not, you know, the... Um, the Nazis and not on the black market sellers, but on the people who are doing good, which is why the, the main protagonists are this um, German doctor who, or this, yeah, this German doctor who's trying to work on the reunification of Germany and an American agricultural specialist who's trying to save people from starving to death um, and famine, which is hilarious that it's played by Robert Ryan because um, you kind of don't expect him to be that. Um, he's just this beefy dude, but he was a very intelligent man and a good, good person, Robert Ryan, in real life. So um, it's not always nice to see him not playing the villain um, that he often played. This was just after he made his big debut in Crossfire, where he was like the worst person. And 
and he could have gotten typecast as that, but he fought really hard not to just be typecast as this tall, brooding villain dude because he was a good man, and he had he was a good actor, and he had complexities, and this is a film that lets him show those complexities, even if bits of it are very cliched, including the pigeonholed romance. Um, but I liked this film a lot. Again, it's on Filmstruck uh, right now, but you can also get it on DVD from Warner Archive Collection, and I recommend it. It was a good noir November pick. Beautiful Jacques Tourneur documentary of post-war Berlin, uh, one of a kind. This is Berlin Express, 1948.